Welcome back everyone, Mean Brew here, and today I'm going to show you three ways to cool the Acer Nitro 5 and possibly other laptops. This may work for you, or it may not, but if you are having throttling issues, try to consider one of them. The heating issue is not tied to just one manufacturer, but many, and is the result of a lot of people wanting thinner laptops with powerful hardware inside. In my opinion, the only real way to fix the issue is to first have adequate room inside the case for airflow, <laughs> larger quality fans, and better ventilation. This cannot be achieved without making the machine larger, heavier, and more expensive. So either buy a desktop or deal with it. With that said, let's get into it. The first way is to repaste and undervolt. If you have an Intel 10th Gen CPU, then undervolting is not an option as it's been disabled from the manufacturers. Some other laptops are able to get around this by flashing the BIOS, but it's risky and may void your warranty or even possibly break the system. Since this is a 10th Gen, my only option is to repaste. Using Hardware 64, we can see the core voltage, clocks, temps, and whether it is throttling. For this test, I have applied Conductonaut to the CPU and GPU, and we'll have a link in the description for the tutorial. Running the CPU option in CPU-Z, we can see that the core clocks are reaching the max speed for four cores. For those that don't know, the 10th Gen i5 has four cores and eight threads with the base clock of 2.5. It also has a max single core speed of 4.5, which is very hard to reach and a max of 42 gigahertz with all cores running. From the test, we are easily reaching that number hovering around 4190. The temps are also fine going no higher than 74. This number can change while playing games as the GPU will also introduce heat into the machine. The voltage is looking good as well as the CPU being 100% utilized. Next up is a benchmark from Far Cry New Dawn. The second way to try and cool the Nitro 5 is by setting the CPU state to 99%. Since my machine is already repasted, your results may vary, but this will give you significant temperature reduction. First, go into your power options by right clicking the battery icon at the bottom right corner of the screen. Select power options, select change plan settings, then select change advanced power settings. A box will pop up and make sure that the plan you want to edit is in the drop down. Scroll down till you see processor power management. Expand the tree. Select maximum processor state and change the plugged in option to 99. Now watch the speed immediately reduce after we hit apply. It drops from 4.03 to 2.37. Running the same stress test, we can see that the clocks are around 2393 MHz, which is not far from the base clock of 2.5 GHz. Temps are very low, pretty close to the idle speed in the mid 40s. The voltage, which was at 1.13, is now at 0.791, which is around 70%, and the usage is at 100%. With this method, your turbo is disabled, you are limited to your base clock, 
lower FPS, and some CPU demanding games may suffer a bit, and spreadsheets may take longer to crunch. The good is that the temps are very low and you may not need to repaste for fear of voiding your warranty. Your battery may last longer, and the life of the computer may also be extended because of less heat to the components and games are still playable. The last way to cool the Nitro 5 is by using throttle stop. Again, if you have a 10th gen Intel CPU, it will not work like it did before. If you have an older CPU or some workaround, then it's business as usual. Anyway, install throttle stop, which is pretty straightforward. Start the program and put a check in speed shift. Speed step is optional. BD Prochot, C1E, and on top. You can open Fiverr, but you can't change anything, but it will give you some information about your max core speeds. I'm not going to use the throttle stop benchmark, but instead continue to use CPU-Z to be consistent. We will now adjust the speed shift to get our desired megahertz. I'm going to shoot for 42. So after adjusting, 127 is the best for my machine to reach a constant 4190.24 megahertz. The temps are pretty much the same as the first method as well as the voltages and usage. So what's really the point of this? Well, unlike setting the CPU state to 99 and losing turbo, we can now adjust our machine to a custom max speed. Let's go for a speed around 3600 megahertz.
so it looks like a speed shift of 133 would do. It has decent temps and a higher than base clock. This is pretty much in the middle of the three methods. Let's run the Far Cry New Dawn benchmark and then we'll run all three side by side. If you have a 10th gen CPU that you can't conventionally undervote, I think this may be the best bet for you as you can get higher than base clock with lower temps and have the ability to adjust as you please. It's also easier to adjust a slider than going into many menus of the power plan. So here are all three tests side by side. You may get different results depending on the game and the benchmark test. Also remember that the fans are set to max and that my machine is using conductor knot. You can plainly see that, like mentioned before, that the middle may be the best. Wrap me up, I can only see this getting worse as processors and GPUs get faster. We can only hope that someone has a breakthrough to get even faster performance at half the watch. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and if you like the content, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Pinku, out.